Hello, I'm Metrism, and welcome back to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4 as Fascist France. We are now Vichy France. And Vichy France is, in fact, fascist. Which is awesome. And um, not really, but for us, in terms of gameplay, it's awesome. Uh, so, we are going to start using our newfound fascist ability to declare war on people by justifying a war against someone. Now, I've been wondering about who we should declare war against. Uh, there's always Venezuela. Always a lovely choice. Mainly because, um... Oil. Oil. Oh, wait, that's, that's United Kingdom. Oil. Oil. I mean, oil is great. Uh, Venezuela. Tempting. But I don't actually have a board of them. And naval invasions are currently beyond us in tech. I believe we actually don't have the tech for naval invasions. Let's just double check. Uh, what is it? Come under... Yes, we need this landing craft. Uh, so, sadly, we can't really get to Venezuela in any meaningful way. Um, the other results we need are tungsten and, I believe, chromium. Let's just double check our resources. Because it's all about securing ourselves some decent resources for the coming war. So, I would like to look at... Where do I find resources? My god, if I just have, like, a complete and utter, like, brain, like, bloop. I can't remember what resources are. Here we go, trade. Uh, aluminium, we've got massive surplus. Uh, rubber, bit of a surplus. Bear in mind that we are getting a load of rubber from here. Which, I don't know, our long-term future. It's just a little bit out on a limb. Uh, what else? Chromium. We have some. Where do we have the chromium from? Okay, don't only over here. We are getting a lot of chromium. 205. Where? Oh my god, where does all this chrome come from? We just feel like a random like little island I'm not paying attention to. We've got eight here. That's just not enough. We've got some tungsten there as well, which is very nice. Um, we could go for this one. Guanzi. You wouldn't give us oil, but you would give us tungsten. And chromium. Now, tungsten and chromium are a bit more important later on in terms of warfare and technology. Uh, I think the obvious one is to pick a oil-rich nation and to go for them. Now, Romania, very tempting. 70 oil right here. Also, has got some nearby chromium and some tungsten. Uh, I mean, we're talking about nearby, like, oh, a few other countries. But, yeah, uh, the problem with this is they're right next to the USSR. The Soviet Union is probably going to jump on us for being fascist fairly early on, especially if we join Germany. Uh, I, I don't fancy being directly in their firing line. Down here. It is a bit of a mess, but we could do it. Taking Iraq. French Iraq would secure us some oil. Not a lot of oil, but enough. We could definitely do with securing some oil down here. Uh, we could always follow through into Iran. Just a small war to get control of this port, which gives us 42. Oh, it's actually this state. Uh, Kuzestan would give us uh, 42 oil, which would be quite nice. I think that's probably going to be our bet. That we go Iraq, maybe a little bit of Iran. Depending on which way Turkey flips, this could be an unfortunate position. Now, I'm hoping that once we declare war on the United Kingdom proper, we can quickly take out the Suez Canal, push down, and secure this area, which means we'll only have one front to deal with. But we will have to deal with the fact that we'll be constantly fighting a land war over here to maintain control of our oil supply. This sounds awfully familiar. Uh, but yeah, we want to start formulating a plan. Justify war, conquer. Uh, and I would kind of want all of them. Which will cost us uh, nine more political power and will last a year. Okay. Now, there's an unfortunate chance that the UK might guarantee them. The UK has this nasty habit of guaranteeing nations. And I don't really want to get into a fight with them too early. So let us unpause and start to going. That's our tactical discussion for today. <laughs> As if there's only been one tactical discussion. I'm going to leave the resources up for the time being. Now, another one we could do is fighting uh, Spain. I did consider this. It's a pretty reasonable choice. If we're going to fight off uh, Republic of Spain at any point, this is probably the easiest one to fight them off at. It'll also weaken them and allow Nationalist Spain to get a lot more support. Uh, I want to actually click on you. Can I, like, send, oh, I can send volunteers? Yes. How many can we send? Four. Okay, right. Here's the idea. How much do you like me? 40. How much do you like me? 50. 
Sure. And a sign. We're going to send you. We're going to send some volunteers. So, Nash and Spain. Hi. I would like to. We can do a lease then, which is effectively giving them equipment. Not that we have much equipment in the way of, to give them, uh, but we can send volunteers. So, we can send up to four people. We could send you. This will generate a little bit of threat, which is unfortunate, but it will boost um, Nash and Spain and hopefully turn them into a friend. If they win, of course. So, we'll have to see about that. Right. Now, the other bonus is it will get us some arm experience when they're fighting, and it will allow us to actually get some experience on the regiments themselves. As those divisions fight, they will gain a little bit of uh, experience for themselves, which will make them better at fighting. Yeah, I'm definitely feeling a rack. Problem is, I also want to kind of change a load of stuff. Like, I want to be able to change my civilian economy. I can go to partial mobilization, war economy right now, and I need to do this really soon. The production bonus is just in insane. Uh, so it's either like I can declare war on Iraq, or I could have the economy bonus, and I feel I've got to go for that, which means no war. Ugh. Unfortunate. I hope my divisions turn up soon, then I can start fighting. Oh yeah! Right, now we can see the war. So this is what a war looks like. These forces are currently surrounded and suffering attrition. I think the bet is probably to save them. So if we charge up here... We're probably going to have to try and take out one of these units to be able to link up with those. Um, what's the current idea? Oh, you're currently just pushing them back. It's just a generalized battle plan. There's no particular specific tactics there. These are cut off. Um, that's fine. I think we'll just try and join in with the push up here. You know what? In fact, let's just cancel that order. What we'll do is we'll put a front line in. Oh, no, that is not the front line. And then do a general offensive push. Ooh. British Parliament debates in, in uh, intervention in the Benelux. This is basically um, like uh, uh, Belgium and Netherlands. I forgot the names for a moment. Uh, having learned from the Great War, the British will not estimate the strategic value of the Benelux region and the potential risks seeing enemy countries build influence there. The British Parliament has debated the possibility of military intervention. When political information for such action weigh heavily on naval Chamberlain, I'm just screwing words up at the moment. It is like 6 a.m. Several decisive arguments were delivered before it is decided the rest of the debate should be continued in closed chambers. Such an intervention would irrevocably change the political landscape. Basically, uh, they've gone down a non historical path, which is interesting. And they've basically sent sort of the threat to these guys that don't become fascist or we will have to intervene. There's a little bit of fascism in there. Now, I wouldn't mind if they became fascist. If they didn't, though, that gives me a chance to try and carve some of them up. Anyway, how are we doing over here? Four units left. I want to try and catch them as soon as possible. Ooh, they've got their own theater. Yeah, I like that. Spanish volunteers, right. Um... Enemy is stronger than us, so I don't think we get a chance to really push forwards. It's a shame. But we'll try our darndest. Okay. Screw it. Just push forwards like that. Now you can see here that we have 36 versus 12. Enemy has superiority, so they're suffering a negative. We're attacking from all directions, so we've got positive. All right, let's do this. Pursuit. And they're going to evade. We need to push through and try and save these four. Come on. Okay. The battle's over today. Because the thing is, as soon as these four get, like, massive attrition, they're just going to pounce on them and destroy them before they can really have a way to defend themselves. Because they're going to be, like, out of supplies, they're going to be starving, etc. It's 
not gonna be good. I'm gonna put you in the European. Oh, you can't assign volunteers to non volunteer theatre. Interesting. Industrial expansion. Excellent. That gives us a load of civilian factories. Now, the next one gives us military factories, which I would love. I really do need some military factories right now. But unfortunately, I feel we've got to still run down the fascist route and get Germany on the side. So, Army of Aggression. I'll go down there. Um, we removed disjointed government. Ooh. We lose that point eight if we go for Army of Aggression. Yes, please. We can no longer sit behind an obsolete wall while our enemies run rampant across Europe. It's time to strengthen our army and push our borders to ensure France continue to be a great nation. France continues to be a great nation. To ensure France continue to be a great... Continues to be a... Oh, okay, that, there we go. I got confused for a moment. It happens a lot. What can I say? I don't think we're going to save this for in time. It's a shame. Italy, peace treaty, the Treaty of Addis Ababa. That's um, Ethiopia, I believe. Uh, let's decrease that. Benelux intervention has increased world tension. Good job, UK. Ooh. They're trying to send in reinforcements. God damn it. I almost had them down to, like, one troop there, and then they send in reinforcements, and I was going to push through. Ugh. Come on. Literally the worst. Although, they're about to break, these ones. Setting another one. This is the only thing with having their, uh, what are they called? Support. Yes, we saved the four! Pull out, pull out, pull out. You see they're like injured and stuff in there. Yeah, they're back. Okay. I managed to save four Spanish units. I'm very happy about that. Uh, how are my units doing? They're pretty good, actually. Fighting strength is at 78%. Organization is about 70%, 68%, sorry about that. Okay, sweet. I think we may have really helped here. Those four units are going to be very important. I feel it. Right. How far are we towards um, aggression? We're okay, about a quarter of the way. Political power change. Excellent. Do we want to feel that up about Iraq, or do we want to push our production forwards? I mean, I really want to push production forwards, but at the same time, if we get into a war, we could just skip partial mobilization and war economy, just go jump, like, jump straight to total mobilization. Which saves us 150 and would uh, give us straight to the plus 30. That said, we need to be against a pretty large country for that to happen. Hmm. Construction's moving. Right, what we should do here is probably try and... Either drive a wedge here, but then they've got a load of ports, or drive a wedge here. And surround them. So yeah, I'm going to delete the order that we've currently got. I'm going to set up a front line. There. Now, I don't have many units to like actually manage this, but we're going to try and drive a wedge. Risky, but we're going to do it. Oh, hello. Oh, it's, it's going really well. Um, we haven't even started doing it. It's just our allies have... Well, our allies actually, like, nationalist Spain have. Uh, we're going to do that and then... Try doing... That. Hopefully encircle them. Cut them off from their supplies. It's risky, though. It's a very thin line. 
Now, they don't actually have any troops back here by the look of it. Oh, hello. Oh, apparently going this way. Expanded that pretty nicely. It's going to all be very, very important. We're going to try and force our way to collapse this bit here. So let's just edit this again. If I had more troops, it's probably easier to do right now. Uh, and then offensive line. There we go. Do that. The idea being that we can try and cut these ones off. Yeah, they failed. They're trying to move troops into secure the that, and they uh, didn't manage it in time. This is the thing. This is why mobile, like, uh, mobile troops are very important. That you can quickly like adjust to this. Stop pushing the like the frontier. I need to try and like lock them away from their like reinforcements. That said, we really turned the tide here. I, I kind of think that our troops were really helpful. I, I think we may have made a big difference. Ah. Well done. What was your name? Alphonse Juin. Well done, Alphonse. Right, we've completed uh, machine tools, which gives us a higher production cap. Um, Coup of synthetic oil. No. Computing machine. Uh, we're, we're still like two thirds of the way forwards in time. I could go radio. Reinforce rate plus 5%. Yeah, that's pretty useful. But I kind of think we've got to do other things now. We've gone fascist. Um, how long until we get these new gun tech? A little while. Let's get support weapons. I'm going to need that. Hindenburg incident. Ooh! Alt Universe. Disaster was narrowly averted today when a diesel fuel leak was discovered on the German passenger airship Hindenburg as it came to dock at the Lakehurst Naval Air Station in the United States. The leak was promptly repaired. Had it gone unnoticed, the flammable vapor could have resulted in a fire that would have engulfed the entire airship. Critics have long questioned the safety, uh, the wisdom of passenger airship given their spotty safety records, and the incident is bound to make them even more vocal. A close call. And we've completed dispersed industry. Yes. And we're going to go straight onto dispersed industry too. Or dem buffs. Now, march in there, cut them off. Marco Polo bridges and Japanese and Chinese forces skirmished inconclusively over the strategic Marco Polo Bridge located just southwest of Beijing. China's rejected trans demands for apology and territorial concessions, claiming that the breaking point of Japanese aggression has been reached. Diplomats feel that the uh, fear that the volatile situation could result in a war at any moment. Interesting times indeed. We finished construction too. Excellent. All the construction is coming out right now. That's way too far ahead. We could gain resource plus 10%. Uh, it's beneficial. At the same time... Now, by the way, if we want to change our... Uh, what do you call it? Land Doctrine, we can do, but it will mean that we miss out on Grand Battle Plan Doctrine 1, which we already have. But this is basically all about trench warfare. Static, defensive. You can then go infiltration and assault, but it's still about having a hard, like, surface to hit against and then countering. Mostly about infantry and so on. It's not terrible. Now, of course, you can change Doctrine to superior firepower, which is a lot about having um, barrage and stuff. Or we could go Mass Assault, which is very much about having severe numbers. Or you can go Mobile Warfare, which is much more about the Blitzkrieg type effect. Uh, we're going to pass on this just for the moment, but it is tempting. And I want to consider something like tanks. Ah, we're too far away. We can get the heavy tank, but I'm, I don't want to get heavy tank too early, because you can get medium, and if you can hold out to 41, you can actually go sideways to grab it, rather than having to come all the way down here, and it skips having to uh, generate one up here. Um, and of course, tanks being taking a long time to produce type uh, entire production line, we just can't afford that right now. So port battalions, uh, we could go for support battalion, but again, we don't have the actual expertise to really do much about it. Marines, useful if we want to do a land uh, sea invasion, but again, we don't really have the technology for that right now. Um, still ahead of time. Strategic bombers. We need the technology anyway if we're going to bomb um, the UK and surrender. No, come on, we need to cut them off. 
Yeah. Looks like we're managing it. Done. They're cut off. Right. Cancel all orders. That's your new front. Make sure they don't break out. We're going to leave the um, Spanish to be able to fight the Spanish. What we're going to do is focus on keeping these ones um, constrained, corralled until they run out of uh, supplies and then we're just going to jump on them. Because that's the honorable thing to do. Finished our army of aggression, which is great. We should be getting, yeah, plus two political power per day. And now we go woo Italy. Um, blah, 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 blah. Italy gets joined the French faction. Sure, we could join Italy and be our own little thing. Or we could just join Germany. I'm going to go with join Germany for now. So Vichy Reich is not, uh, sorry, Vichy France is not a puppet. That piece of German Reich, one of the problems to be true. Current Roman faction is fascist. More than 4% support for the fascist movement is not a faction. German Reich exists. Current ruler is fascist. Is faction leader. Mutual is blah, blah, blah. The German Reich is becoming a force to reckon with. Their vision for a better future can be aligned with our interests. We should support them, and once the dust settles, France will get its rightful piece of Europe. Please don't turn us down, senpai. Uh, right, but that is where we're going to end today's episode. You can see that we uh, have managed to really help out, I think, in National Spain. I, I feel we made a, a nice contribution. I've actually never seen National Spain actually win this. So, this could be at first. Uh, other than that... I don't know. I don't know when the war's going to kick off. Germany actually doesn't hasn't done much in the way of provoking anyone right now. So it could be a case of, you know, they're not going to start a war immediately. Um, we could take over Iraq ourselves. It doesn't mean not getting that total war mobilization thing that I kind of wanted to do. Um, we could just go war economy. So much more building. But now we're getting plus two per day, so it's actually a lot better. I mean, plus one, because we're currently doing reform. But that's not as bad as it used to be, by any means. Now, there are lots of more fun things you can do with political power. For instance, you can be like, Hi, um, uh, Switzerland, I would like to boost the fascism popularity. And it costs, you know, a quarter of a point per day. And then you can use that to stage a coup, a coup or you could just get them to, like, flip in a normal election. Uh, I won't, of course, do that, especially not Switzerland, because I want theirs. Like, their land should be mine. Fascist Austria. Ooh, that's interesting. Hello, Fascist Austria. Uh, but you might be able to do that to someone like the United States. And I have had um, the three United States Empire, or the three American Empire, that's the one. Like, something like that turned up when I boosted a coup over there. It might be useful to be able to, you know, try and shut them down. The problem is the United States is very strong, and... Trying to shut down uh, their industry with uh, a coup is very difficult. They have a slight defense against ideological drift anyway, so if we do lose party popularity, you notice it's only 0.08. The UK, 0.05. So there are some better targets and some worse targets. Again, Soviet Union's got a similar one. Anyway, we're going to end it there for today. Hopefully next time we'll be joining the German Reich. So far, the Spanish Civil War is going fairly well. We're not going to get Spain, but, you know, hopefully we can uh, have a strong ally in the area. Anyway, until next time, like, subscribe, leave your comments and feedback below. Until next time, stay sharp.